Nature abhors a vacuum, and power is nature's twin. Power deplores its own absence, and we're seeing that in Ukraine. It was but days after the sunburst of idealism some associate with the Olympics that Vladimir Putin, ex-KGB communist, current autocrat of Russia, stomped in front of all the world on the sovereignty of Ukraine. To hell with the five rings of the games, the golden flame, and the honor of hosting the Olympics, Tsar Putin will never trade world opinion, the goodwill of other nations, for any restraint on his own power and empire. Essentially, the equation is simple. If Mr. Putin wants something, Mr. Putin will take it. World opinion be damned. A proposition made iron proof by his utter willingness to ground whatever goodwill the Olympics generated for advances into Crimea and Ukraine days after the athletes of the world gave all of us some light. What makes him so bold? Why is he so confident, so casually impetuous? Well, look at his opposite number, the President of the United States. Obama, the world has learned, is not the light bearer of the campaign trail five years ago. He is a man instead all hollow style, the upturned head at the microphone, the pose of nobility, mesmerized by his own words. In the real challenges that accumulate in the White House, he has been serially disappointing. There's been Benghazi, the infamous red line in Syria. Infamously, Assad continues in power, continues his civilian murders. Who even remembers the gassings now? Backed, of course, by the same Vladimir Putin. The Obama administration spins along without consequence. Europe sits on the sidelines looking for and expecting no real leadership from this White House. These are the circumstances in which a Russia much less powerful than it's ever been, militarily far weaker than the U.S. and the U.S.'s allies, taunts the international order and violates the sovereignty of nations. Mr. Putin struts around with the confidence of a schoolyard bully who has never been challenged. Mr. Putin risks, and the vibrations are there, sending the world into places we do not wish to contemplate partly because of American weakness. Obama likes being president. He likes the role. He likes gala occasions. He is the MC of all the world. But when reality shows its teeth, when real problems requiring real attention and courage come to pass, the world wants more than a master of ceremonies. It wants a presence in the White House at least as determined as Vladimir Putin or any other autocrat. Putin is to blame for what's happening, but he dares to do what he does because he has measured Mr. Obama, and Mr. Obama does not measure up. For The National, I'm Rex Murphy.